Good evening, everyone. Um, well, coming after these two uh, uh, acts is actually uh, not only a, a pleasure, but it's, it makes my uh, my own uh, uh, duty a lot simpler. Because as you will see, uh, even though we'll start from very different uh, points, uh, we will reverberate a lot of uh, uh, the uh, uh, pearls of wisdom that we've heard uh, from them. It's a, the, the point of uh, uh, departure, of course, is very different. It starts with uh, uh, management, with business decisions. Um, but it, it, it tries to give you uh, at least a flavor of what uh, my own uh, experience has been over the last few years in trying to make this uh, um, uncommon marriage work because clearly neurosciences and management um, have really never uh, met before. It's a, it's a not uh, couple for a number of reasons and I will uh, hopefully explain to you. Um, and uh, not only me of course, but there are a number of people around the world, very few, but a few, but there are, who are trying to make this uh, uh, link and try, and try to uh, uh, really understand some of the fundamental uh, business problems from a neuroscientific uh, uh, perspective. The way that I, I'm thinking to go through, of course, is first of all to tell you why uh, this might make sense. Uh, it's not obvious. Although after these talks, obviously things, things seem to uh, start making sense uh, already. And then try to give you uh, a flavor of how this might work. Uh, what are some of the uh, uh, methodological uh, breakthroughs that we've been uh, trying to leverage. And obviously the, some of the initial results. I, I would like to stress the fact that uh, these are really initial steps. Uh, um, I'm a social scientist by training. I'm not a neuroscientist. Uh, and <laughs> I will never be, but I love playing with people that, uh, that have uh, a different mindset and different uh, 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 knowledge domain. And that's, that's what brought me to this. But uh, we're all very uh, much aware of the fact that we're only started uh, in a journey that uh, I'm pretty confident I can say it's going to be a long journey. But it's really at the very beginning. And that maybe give you a, a final view on, on how uh, you know, I see this journey at least in the next few uh, years. The uh, the problem. So let's start with the problem of strategic. How many how many uh, 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 senior, let's say, experienced business people we have here? Uh, can you raise your hand? How many makes you know, quite a few, quite a few hands. So um, you know, this is what I do for a living. Okay, I, I teach uh, strategic management, corporate strategy, as, as Alka said, M&A, and all sorts of other uh, fun things to, uh, to talk about. Obviously, fun is, a, is an ironical. Um, now, the, uh, the, the discipline has gone through a lot of uh, change, a lot of work, obviously, over the, over the last few uh, decades. Um, it has started off by trying to Obviously, the fundamental question is how uh, can we explain why company X okay, is capable of making more money than company Y, right? What are the sources, what are the factors that might explain that? And it started off by looking primarily at the macro factors, industry, right? It's, it's about the sector in which they are, it's about the uh, context in which you do business, and so on and so forth. It went uh, more, uh, relatively recently, more, a bit more uh, seriously in depth in trying to understand what happens inside firms at the organizational level. So it's about resources, it's about the capabilities that exist within firms, it's about the relationships that, uh, uh, that people have, and so on and so forth. Now, the fundamental uh, missing angle, of course, is the role of the individual, right? Uh, in strategic decisions. Obviously, there's a lot of discussions about individuals, you know, leadership, for example. I mean, there are, there are uh, thousands of books about that. There's no question about it. The, the problem is linking it to what we know about strategic decision. That has not been done. Basically, strategic management is, as of today, still uh, uh, you know, a business uh, 
um, study uh, without the man, <laughs> without the the, uh, the actual actor who makes those decisions uh, really explicitly uh, addressed. That's a fundamental uh, issue. So the problem is how do we actually, well, first of all, understand why, why we have that problem, right? So the, the, the answer is actually quite, uh, quite simple, even though uh, you won't see it in the, in the typical textbooks. Uh, the fundamental answer is because um, strategy, uh, strategic management in particular, has been essentially based on uh, the standard neoclassic economics textbooks, right? The economics basically start from a very, very simplistic uh, and actually increasingly proven to be completely wrong uh, model of the human being, okay? It's a human being that uh, is not only uh, basically not all-knowing, right? Uh, almost they assume either perfect or close to perfect information in most models, in all the classic models, in fact. Uh, completely selfish, there's no question that uh, um, there's no other uh, real motivation other than uh, pure uh, self-interest seeking behavior with God, meaning without any moral, forgiveness. completely agnostic about morality, really, uh, and uh, without any notion of, of emotions, as we, as, we, as we know. Or at least if there are, it's a problem rather than, than an asset. So there has been obviously uh, work done that has tried to, to uh, uh, eliminate or at least reduce uh, some of these uh, uh, limitations, some of these boundaries, and I'm citing a few that we don't really need to go into details, but what I call their behavior uh, revolution is basically a, a whole very large body of, uh, of uh, scholarly work that really focuses the attention on, on behavior and particularly uh, routinized behavior as an explanation of learning and, and capability development. Um, I happen to be part of this group, at least you know, most recent years. The problem is that even this is not enough, right? Because by explaining only behavior, we're missing all the stuff that happens before behavior, right? You're missing the factors that might uh, might explain why, in the same company, two managers facing the same context, facing the same problem, right, might uh, come up with completely different behavior, right? And that's that's the uh, that's the issue. Uh, the issue is how do you actually study that, and how do you actually make sense of it, and and that's. Uh, again, psychology has been there for a long time, um, so we, we've, uh, we've heard actually some, some uh, uh, fairly uh, important, fundamental, in fact, contribution by a number of uh, branches of, uh, of psychology. Neuroscience has uh, given us, uh, quite recently in fact, uh, us as social scientists, if you want, uh, has given us quite recently a number of tools, a number of ways to think about uh, human brain and the connection between brain and mind is, is quite complicated. We don't want to go into that right now. But the, uh, at least <laughs> look, being able to look at the, the, the brain in a, in a uh, very sophisticated, a lot more uh, objective way, which psychology unfortunately has never really uh, been able to do. Not only that, but uh, as has been already mentioned, neuroplasticity, right? There's a complete new way to think about the brain and its ability to change radically uh, uh, entire systems, entire neural systems that can, that are supposed to be dedicated to, say, hearing, right? In, in a man that loses the hearing, are actually redesigned to do something else. Okay? I mean, we are not just talking about synapses. The, that they are connected or disconnected. There's entire systems that can be, can be uh, uh, plastically modified, uh, adapted, adjusted, in, in ways that were totally unthinkable only 15, 20 years ago. Um, now, the other part also has, been, has come out, right? The, the, the mirror neurons. Uh, Rizzolatti is the uh, Italian uh, scientist, neuroscientist that has uh, identified this. This has changed again the way that we think about what the human being 
are, is, is capable, at least among the circles of, of scholars and society with it, right? So placing a huge, a huge, basically the central, uh, at the center of the attention, uh, empathy, right? The empathic society, as Rif Rifkin has wrote. Now, the interesting thing is that, you know, uh, very recently now, these people have started to speak to uh, folks that study business, right? Uh, now, economics, interestingly enough, has already been uh, 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 making some, some, some advancements. So economists are actually talking to, have been talking to some of these neuro neuroscientists over the last 10 years, not, not more than that. Um, but, again, <laughs> they've done it with the baggage of assuming that human beings are like the one that I <laughs> that I showed before, which is obviously uh, uh, quite unrealistic. Now, so what I'm going to do is basically give you uh, uh, a, a snapshot of, of this short journey that we've been doing, and obviously it's not just me, there are some colleagues of mine at Bocconi and uh, some uh, very expert neuroscientists in, in, in Milan, in, in a different uh, university, of course, you know, the, the M&M's, right, mistakes and misunderstandings are all are all mine so uh, blame me for for uh, for any procedure now what is it that we wanted to do um, well there are some uh, fairly important first of all we, we decided to start from probably one of the most fundamental uh, problem in, in business uh, management is, is innovation right how do you think particularly about the uh, uh, trade-off that we know exists between being able to exploit innovations, exploit what actually the company is already capable of doing, and at the same time exploring, coming up with, with you know, uh, radically new ideas. One, the less, the less uh, resources and, and, and attention span you have for the other and so on. How, how can the shift be done, particularly at the individual level? So we were thinking about those things, never, they've never been studied at the individual level, so it was a good way to, uh, to start. And the link, of course, to performance is obviously uh, at the heart of what we do, right? Not only uh, you as practitioners, but we as, uh, as sciences and scientists. Now, the uh, entrepreneurial uh, component, right? Innovation is obviously done both in big firms, managers, as well as in smaller entrepreneurial concerns. There's always been this fundamental question. Is there any difference in the way that the same problem is tackled, whether, it, whether the person who tackles that problem is, is a manager in, in, a, in, a, in a big firm or an entrepreneur, right? Uh, you know, who started up, for example, that, that, that company, right? Um, are there, it's more in general, differences that, in terms of how these you know, business decisions are made uh, connected to the background, to the to the history, to the prior experience. You know, we talk. Uh, I just you know uh, brought up the, the the fundamental revolution of neuroplasticity. Clearly, if that is true, then we need to expect that there are uh, fundamental differences connected to that.